Hi, I'm Enrique with Make. An oscilloscope is an indispensable tool for any electronics enthusiast. Unlike a digital multimeter, an oscilloscope can not only measure peak to peak voltages, but also give you timing information on your digital or analog signals. Once you progress past basic circuits, you'll find yourself wanting an oscilloscope. In today's weekend project by Ryan Slaw, we'll be building an inexpensive oscilloscope, or O-scope, based on Steve Garrett's popular project by leveraging the power of the sound card of your computer. You'll not only be amazed at how well it works, but it will save you hundreds of dollars compared to even an entry-level scope. You only need a few basic components to make this project. You can head on over to your local Radio Shack or pick them up online. You also need an afternoon and just a few basic tools to complete the build. It's a great project for even a beginner, and the final oscilloscope will be very useful even if you're a seasoned maker. An oscilloscope works by listening in on an electronic circuit. To do this, you'll need a few probes. These probes allow you to read, analyze, and take measurements of the electrical signals. You'll also need a simple circuit that allows you to adjust the sensitivity of these probes and protects your sound card. It's easy to assemble the circuits and probes, so let's jump right in and get making. Ryan Slaw's design calls for a double-sided perf board. If you don't have one, don't worry, you can easily make one. Take any two identical perf boards and cut them to a size with a hacksaw. Then turn them back to back so the copper pads are on the exterior. Now take some wire and run it through the corners, soldering it to both sides. This will create a solid perf board that has copper pads on both sides. You'll start by gluing the potentiometers to the board. Next, you'll solder in the two 4.7 kilo ohm resistors and then the four diodes. Be sure to check out the project page for a detailed schematic and more tips and tricks for building the circuit. Now you can cut the audio cable to whatever length you need and then strip the insulation from the end. One of the wires will be stranded and will not have any insulation. This is the ground wire. The other two wires with insulation around them will become channel one and channel two of the probe's input. Solder all three wires to your circuit board as described in the schematic. Next, you'll need to make all of the connections to the three leads on the potentiometers. One is the ground, another is connected to the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor for the probe, and the last goes to the sound card via a pair of diodes for added protection against voltage spikes. The easiest way to probe a circuit is to use test clip adapters. They allow you to clip to a wire and hold it securely, which helps to avoid shorts. You want to solder a wire to each of the clip leads. For a two-channel O-scope setup, you'll make a total of three probes, two red ones for the signal lines, and one black one for the ground line. After connecting the clip leads, connect to the other end of the wire to the appropriate place in the perf board. The ends of the red wires are signal wires, and they attach to the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. The black wire attaches to the ground rail on the perf board. The perf board and wire solder joint need some sort of strain relief so you don't pull the wires out accidentally. A well-placed drop of hot glue on each of the three wire-to-board junctions does the trick. At this point, the electronics and hardware portion of the project is complete. However, you might want to add an enclosure or some knobs to the potentiometers. Next, you'll need to download and install the SoundCard Oscilloscope software. You'll find a link to the free download on the SoundCard Oscilloscope project page. The software is surprisingly robust. Not only does it provide support for the two-channel input, but also for fast Fourier transformer FFT measurements, cursors, X and Y plots, and even a signal generator. Now we should mention, you're not going to get the high-speed measuring capabilities of a benchtop oscilloscope. However, your DIY sound card oscope can still easily analyze things like the pulse width modulation of a servo and the signals generated from an Arduino. It has a sampling rate of about 44,000 times per second, where a benchtop unit can measure up to 2 billion times per second or more. Once completed, the sound card scope will quickly become an indispensable asset to your electronics bench. It's a perfect oscilloscope for people just starting out in electronics, and it comes with the satisfaction that you built it yourself. Oh, and that you saved hundreds of dollars compared to buying one. <laughs>